Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Prachi and it's time for Whip and Read where Whip stands for Work in Progress and I'm going to work on Diamond Art Club's Alice in Wonderland by Jojo's Art. I can put up the image somewhere on the screen. Also, I will link all the videos related to this diamond painting in the info card up above in the i section. So if you guys are interested, please go ahead and take a look at them. So while I diamond paint, I am going to read you guys through the next chapter from the book Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. So grab whatever that you guys are working on and come along and work with me or sit back, listen to the story and watch while I diamond paint. So let's get started. Chapter 6 Humpty Dumpty However, the egg only got larger and larger and more and more human. When she had come within a few yards of it, she saw that it had eyes and a nose and a mouth. And when she had come close to it, she saw clearly that it was Humpty Dumpty himself. It can't be anybody else, she said to herself. I am as certain of it as if his name were written all over his face. It might have been written a hundred times easily on the enormous face. Humpty Dumpty was sitting with his legs crossed like a Turk on the top of a high wall, such a narrow one that Alice quite wondered how he could keep his balance and as his eyes were steadily fixed in the opposite direction and he did not take the least notice of her, she thought he must be a stuffed figure after all. And how exactly like an egg he is, she said aloud, standing with her hands ready to catch him, for she was every moment expecting him to fall. It's very provoking, Humpty Dumpty said after a long silence, looking away from Alice as he spoke, to be called an egg, very. I said you looked like an egg, sir. Alice gently explained, and some eggs are very pretty, you know, she added, hoping to turn her remark into a sort of a compliment. Some people, said Humpty Dumpty, looking away from her as usual, have no more sense than a baby. Alice did not know what to say of this. It wasn't at all like conversation, she thought, as he never said anything to her. In fact, his last remark was evidently addressed to a tree, so she stood and softly repeated to herself, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty in his place again. That last line is much too long for the poetry, she added almost out loud forgetting that Humpty Dumpty would hear her. Don't stand here chattering to yourself like that, Humpty Dumpty said, looking at her for the first time. But tell me your name and your business. My name is Alice, but... It's a stupid enough name, Humpty Dumpty interrupted impatiently. What does it mean? Must a name mean something? Alice asked doubtfully. Of course it must, Humpty Dumpty said with a short laugh. My name means the shape I am and a good handsome shape it is too. With a name like yours, you might be any shape almost. Why do you sit out here all alone? said Alice, not wishing to begin an argument. Why? Because there's nobody with me, cried Humpty Dumpty. Did you think I did not know the answer to that? Ask another. Don't you think you had be safer down on the ground? Alice went on, not with any idea of making another riddle, but simply in her good-natured anxiety for the queer creature. That wall is so very narrow. What tremendously easy riddles you ask? Humpty Dumpty growled out. Of course, I don't think so. Why, if ever I did fall off, which there's no chance of, but if I did, here he paused his lips and looked. 
so solemn and grand that Alice could hardly help laughing. If I did fall, he went on, the king has promised me with his very own mouth to, to, to send all his horses and all his men. Alice interrupted rather unwisely. Now, I declare that's too bad, Humpty Dumpty cried, breaking into a sudden passion. You have been listening at doors and behind trees and down chimneys, or you could not have known it. I haven't indeed, Alice said very gently. It's in a book. Ah, well, they may write such things in a book, Humpty Dumpty said in a calmer tone. That's what you call a history of England, that is. Now take a good look at me, and I am one that has spoken to a king. I am, mayhap, you will never see such another, and to show you I am not proud, you may shake hands with me, and he grinned almost from year to year, as he leant forwards, and as nearly as possible fell off the wall in doing so, and offered Alice his hand. She watched him a little anxiously as she took it. If he smiled much more, the ends of his mouth might meet behind, she thought. And then, I don't know what would happen to his head. I am afraid it would come off. Yes, all his horses and all his men, Humpty Dumpty went on. They had picked me up again in a minute. They would. However, this conversation is going on a little too fast. Let's go back to the last remark, but one. I am afraid I can't quite remember it, Alice said very politely. In that case, we start fresh, said Humpty Dumpty, and it's my turn to choose a subject. He talks about it just as if it was a game, thought Alice. So, here's a question for you. How old did you say you were? Alice made a short calculation and said seven years and six months. Wrong, Humpty Dumpty exclaimed triumphantly. You never said a word like it. I thought you meant. How old are you? Alice explained. If I had meant that, I had have said it, said Humpty Dumpty. Alice did not want to begin another argument, so she said nothing. Seven years and six months, Humpty Dumpty repeated thoughtfully. An uncomfortable sort of age. Now, if you had asked my advice, I had have said, leave off at seven, but it's too late now. I never ask advice about growing, Alice said indignantly. Too proud, the other inquired. Alice felt even more indignant at this suggestion. I mean, she said, that one can't help growing older. One can't perhaps, said Humpty Dumpty, but two can with proper assistance. You might have left off at seven. What a beautiful belt you have got on, Alice suddenly remarked. They had had quite enough of the subject of age, she thought, and if they really were to take turns in choosing subjects, it was her turn now. At least, Alice corrected herself on second thought, a beautiful cravat, I should have said, no, a belt, I mean, I beg your pardon, she added in dismay. For Humpty Dumpty looked thoroughly offended, and she began to wish she had not chosen that subject. If I only knew, she thought to herself, which was neck and which was waist. Evidently, Humpty Dumpty was very angry, though she said nothing for a minute or two. When she did speak again, it was in a deep growl. It is a most provoking thing, she said at last, when a person does not know a cravat from a belt. I know it's very ignorant of me, Alice said in so humble a tone that Humpty Dumpty relented. It's a cravat, child, and a beautiful one, as you say. It's a present from the white king and queen. There now. Is it really? said Alice, quite pleased to find that she had chosen a good subject after all. They gave it to me. Humpty Dumpty continued thoughtfully as he crossed one knee over the other and clasped his hands round it. They, they gave it me 
for an unbirthday present. I beg your pardon, Alice said with a puzzled air. I am not offended, said Humpty Dumpty. I mean, what is an unbirthday present? A present given when it isn't your birthday, of course. Alice considered a little. I like birthday presents best, she said at last. You don't know what you're talking about, cried Humpty Dumpty. How many days are there in a year? 365, Alice said. And how many birthdays have you? One. And if you take one from 365, what remains? 364, of course. Humpty Dumpty looked doubtful. I had rather see that done on paper, he said. Alice could not help smiling as she took out her memorandum book and worked the sum off for him. 365, 1, 364. Humpty Dumpty took the book and looked at it carefully. That seems to be done right, he began. You are holding it upside down, Alice interrupted. To be sure, I was. Humpty Dumpty said gaily as she turned it round for him. I thought it looked a little queer. As I was saying, that seems to be done right. Though I haven't time to look it over thoroughly just now. And that shows that there are 364 days when you might get unbirthday presents. Certainly, said Alice, and only one for birthday presents, you know. There's glory for you. I don't know what you mean by glory, Alice said. Humpty Dumpty smiled contemptuously. Of course you don't. Till I tell you, I meant there's a nice knockdown argument for you. But glory does not mean a nice knockdown argument, Alice objected. When I use a word, Humpty Dumpty said in rather a snowful tone, it means just what I chose it to mean, neither more nor less. The question is, said Alice, whether you can make words mean so many different things. The question is, said Humpty Dumpty, which is to be master, that's all. Alice was too much puzzled to say anything. So after a minute, Humpty Dumpty began again. They have a temper, some of them, particularly verbs. They are the proudest objectives you can do anything with but not verbs. However, I can manage the whole lot of them. Impenetrability, that's what I say. Would you tell me, please, said Alice, what that means? Now you talk like a reasonable child, said Humpty Dumpty, looking very much pleased. I meant by impenetrability that we have had enough of that subject and it would be just as well if you had mentioned what you mean to do next, as I suppose you don't mean to stop here all the rest of your life. That's a great deal to make one word mean, Alice said in a thoughtful tone. When I make a word to a lot of work like that, said Humpty Dumpty, I always pay it extra. Oh said Alice. She was too much puzzled to make any other remark. Ah, you should see them come round me of a Saturday night. Humpty Dumpty went on wagging his head gravely from side to side for to get their wages, you know. Alice did not venture to ask what he paid them with and so you see I can't tell you. You seem very clever at explaining words, sir, said Alice. Would you kindly tell me the meaning of the poem called Jabberwocky? Let's hear it, said Humpty Dumpty. I can explain all the poems that were ever invented and a good many that haven't been invented just yet. This sounded very hopeful. So Alice repeated the first verse. Twas wringling and the slithy toes did cry and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borough groves and the mom rather's outgrave. That's enough to begin with, Humpty Dumpty interrupted. There are plenty of hard words there. Brilliant means four o'clock in the afternoon, the time when you begin broiling things for dinner. That 
it will do very well said alice and slithy well slithy means lithe and slimy lithy is the same as active you see it's like a portmanteau there are two meanings packed up into one word i see it now alice remarked thoughtfully and what are toves well toves are something like badgers they are something like lizards and they are something like crocsoos they must be very curious looking creatures they are that said humpty dumpty also they make their nests under sun dials also they live on cheese and what's the gar and to gimbal the gar is to go round and round like a gyroscope to gimbal is to make holes like a gimlet and the babe is the grass plot round a sundial i suppose said alice surprised as her own ingenuity of course it is it it's called wave you know because it goes a long way before it and a long way behind it and a long way beyond it on each side alice added exactly so well then mimsy is flimsy and miserable there's another portmanteau for you and a burrow grove is a thin shabby looking bird with its feathers sticking out all round something like a live mop and then more parrots said alice i am afraid i'm giving you a great deal of trouble well a rat is a sort of green pig but mom i am not certain about i think it's sort for from home meaning that they had lost their way you know and what does outgrab mean well outgrabbing is something be- between bellowing and whistling with a kind of sneeze in the middle however you will hear it done maybe down in the wo- wood yonder and when you have once heard it you will be quite content who is been repeating all that hard stuff to you i read it in a book said alice but i had some poetry repeated to me much easier than that by twiddledee i think it was as to poetry you know said humpty dumpty stretching out one of his great hands i can repeat poetry as well as other folk if it comes to that oh it need not come to that alice hastily said hoping to keep him from beginning the piece i am going to repeat he went on without noticing her remark was written entirely for your amusement alice felt that in that case she really ought to listen to it so she sat down and said thank you rather sadly in winter when the fields are white i sing this song for your delight only i don't sing he added as an explanation i see you don't said alice if you can see whether i am singing or not you have sharper eyes than most humpty dumpty remarked severely alice was silent in spring when woods are getting green i will try and tell you what i mean thank you very much said alice in summer when the days are long perhaps you will understand the song in autumn when the leaves are brown take pen and ink and write it down i will if i can remember it so long said alice you need not go on making remarks like that humpty dumpty said they are not sensible and they put me out i sent a message to the fish i told them this is what i wish the little fishes of the sea they sent an answer back to me the little fishes answer was we cannot do it sir because i am afraid i don't quite understand said alice it gets easier further on humpty dumpty replied i sent to them again to say it will be better to obey the fish is answered with a grin why what a temper you are in i told them once i told them twice they would not listen to advice i took a kettle large and new fit for the deed i had to do my heart went hop my heart went thump i filled the kettle at the pump 
then someone came to me and said the little fishes are in bed i said to him i said it plain then you must wake them up again i said it very loud and clearly i went and shouted in his ears Humpty Dumpty raised his voice almost to a scream as he repeated this verse and Alice thought with a shudder I would not have been the messenger for anything but he was very stiff and proud he said you need not shout so loud and he was very proud and stiff he said i had go and wake them if i took a corkscrew from the shelf i went to wake them up myself and when i found the door was locked I pulled and pushed and kicked and knocked and when I found the door was shut I tried to turn the handle but there was a long pause is that all Alice timidly asked that's all said Humpty Dumpty goodbye this was rather sudden Alice thought but after such a very l- strong hint that she ought to be going she felt that it would hardly be civil to stay so she got up and held out her hand goodbye till we meet again she said as cheerfully as she could i should not know you again if you did meet humpty dumpty replied in a discontented tone giving her one of his fingers to shake you are so exactly like other people the face is what one goes by generally alice remarked in a thoughtful tone that's just what i complain of said humpty dumpty your face is the same as everybody has the two eyes so marking their places in the air with his thumb nose in the middle mouth under it's always the same now if you had the two eyes on the same side of the nose for instance or the mouth at the top that would be some help it would not look nice alice objected but humpty dumpty only shut his eyes and said wait till you have tried alice waited a minute to see if he would speak again but as he never opened his eyes or took any further notice of her she said goodbye once more and getting no answer to this she quietly walked away but she could not help saying to herself as she went of all the unsatisfactory she repeated this aloud as it was a great comfort to have such a long word to say of all the unsatisfactory people i ever met she never finished the sentence for at this moment a heavy crash shook the forest from end to end i will continue reading the next chapter in the next whip and read for this diamond painting that's it for today if you have any questions concerns put them down in the comment section below and i will get back as soon as possible also if you have enjoyed watching this video please consider giving a thumbs up and if you are not already subscribed please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video thanks for joining see you soon bye bye